Hello everybody, Spider Crusher here, and this is an advanced tutorial on some professional screening ideas using Telechart. In this tutorial, I will be explaining how you can create sublists and uh, sort by relative strength in a couple different ways. So here is a basic Telechart layout. You can see that there is price right here, dollar volume. Looking to the left, we have uh, my basic universe watch list, which is approximately 3,000 stocks. If you hover the mouse, you can see that I'm just looking for liquid stocks above $2.50. In addition to that, I have some other capitalization short interest metrics, and you can add any number of columns that are fundamentally or technically related. Um, right now, I'm ordered by capitalization. You can see if you click around on these different stocks, you get the other stocks in the subsector or in the broad industry, so that's a cool tool that I <clears throat> like to use. And last thing I need to explain is my small bars indicator. The small bars indicator tells you how much volatility is changing bar to bar. So for example, right here on Apple, there was a high amount of volatility between each bar. If you go right here, there was a very low amount of volatility between each bar. So this indicator is very helpful to me for two ways. One, if you're looking for range expansion trades, you can find stocks that have a lower small bars value for the ex assumed range expansion one way or another. And two, if you're looking for mean reversion trades, you can sort for stocks that have a higher small bars value and thus are more volatile and more prone to whipsaw and zigzagging. So it's a helpful indicator and we're going to be using it in this tutorial. So what I'm going to do is right click here and then do quick sort latest value sort. Now it's going to take all of my 3,050 stocks and put them in order of which one had the highest small bars value. So you can see Finisar is number one, CIGX is number two, and so on and so forth. When I was clicking through this list, I saw LNG, which I thought was interesting. It had a 30% drop on an accounting issue and then has since rallied strongly in the face of high volatility. So this looks like to me that it could sell off again and that would be the bet, let's say, that you'd be making on this trade. So I want to find more stocks that might fit this setup. Now, I'm going to have to think of some threshold limit for the small bars value. And for me, that's 20, because that's pretty high. So what you can do is you can right click and then do flag all above this item, because this is the 20 mark of the small bars indicator. And this is a new sublist. So when I do backslash flag, now it's going to give me only these shortlisted stocks that already have a high small bars volatility. The next thing I can do is jumping to LNG, I can use my custom date sort tool to measure the percentage change from this low to this high, which is 32%. Now the fact that this is a stock specific date sort, maybe I should use this on the S&P and we'll do that. But quickly, you can see that in the period that LNG bounced 32%, you have Green Mountain bouncing 44%, and uh, Lubrizol, which was a buyout, bouncing 26%, and so on. Now, some of these stocks, this stock, for instance, uh, is a very strong stock in the face of a weak market. This might be a risky short assumption. So how about we quickly find stocks that are trading below their moving average? To do this, we would right-click, do Add Column, and then do above price history because we want the moving average to be above the price. We'll make this red. And we'll do add column. And now we'll resort by this predominant downtrend. Now you can see that we're only going to be having stocks that are underneath the average with the high volatility and we can see if they had moved up in the preceding five days or down and form a trade bias off of that. Jumping back to LNG, it's actually above this short-term exponential moving average. So if I wanted to make this a tighter average to find stocks that are in a shorter-term downtrend as opposed to a quarterly downtrend, we can change this to 21 and then rescan. Oh, excuse me, I did that correctly. You know what they say, haste makes waste. above price history and then sort and these stocks will be in a shorter term uh, downtrend so I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial of different ways to find stocks